everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about our um, just raw clay and some different ideas of things that you can do with it. So um, this video is mainly for the families that are purchasing our um, our clay hand building pack. Um, so inside of that pack you had two sticks here. You have a little rolling pin. You have a little container. This is actually slip, so it's just broken down clay with water. Um, it's just wet, really wet clay. Um, if you run out, take a little bit of more of your clay that you have here and just soak it in some water overnight and just kind of um, rough it up so that it starts to break down. You want it to be slippery. It's called slip, right? Because you wanna be able to um, feel it in your fingers like that. This we use as our glue, so it helps stick our pieces of clay together. Um, clay as it dries it actually shrinks um, down 10% and as it does that if we haven't glued our pieces together really well it'll actually start to break apart so for example I gathered a couple of pieces here that are around the studio that are super cute um, just to give you some ideas of things you can make with your clay so this little guy is you know a little shark it looks like happy shark thankfully he has a little smile on his face um so this looks to me like it was actually formed all in one piece so just by hand building pulling your clay kind of like you would play-doh or those kinds of things um to make your little different body parts the only two things that it looks like they um, attached on are his two little fins here so how you would do that is form these pieces separately you're going to take some of your um, slip so pretend I'm slipping and scoring two pieces together that's what we call it when we glue it together it's called slipping and scoring so if I wanted to put these two pieces of clay together if I just push them together like this there's a really good chance as it dries and as it goes through the firing process that it's going to break apart again so what we want to do instead is use your little needle tool here that was also in your pack you're going to rough up your clay really well so just make a bunch of little light marks. See, I'm not going overly deep, right? It's just on the surface. And do that on both pieces. Once you have those little marks, you're going to take a little bit of your slip, just get a big glob of it like this, and you're just gonna dot it on. The big trick with this is you wanna dot it on. Don't rub it in, because then you're getting rid of all those little marks that you just made. So I'm gonna dot my, my um, slip onto one of my pieces. And then we're gonna push it together, okay? And then you can go in and if you had extra slip that came through, you can clean all that up, make it look nice. Remember that any little sharp areas, so like if I was to leave this little area, hopefully you can see it, um, this little area here, even though right now it's soft, right? Because it's wet clay, once that dries, that's gonna become really sharp, okay? So we wanna be really mindful as we're working with the clay. You don't have to do it right away, but before it dries, Go through with a um, wet sponge or just with a wet finger and really soften all those edges so that you don't have anything that's sharp when it comes out of the kiln, okay? So I don't know what that is that I just made, but two pieces that are very well stuck together, right? So I know that these aren't going to break apart. So I'm willing to bet that that's exactly what they did here because you can see that this came out of the kiln really beautifully. So they slipped and scored. They scratched the clay up on both sides and used some of this slip to glue their little fins together. Um, here's another couple pieces. I'm just going to clean my hands so I don't mess up people's artwork. Here's another couple pieces that I just quickly grabbed that are sitting here in the studio right now. Here's a really cool dragon, okay, which brings me to another point. Inside of this, see how this is pretty thick here, the body? You don't want to ever have anything thicker than a golf ball. So that means that inside of our dragon, we actually hollowed out the bottom part of this little guy so that he wouldn't have any accidents inside of the kiln. So again, if you have anything thicker than a golf ball, flip the piece over and just hollow the inside of it out. So you can use like a spoon or any like materials that you can find at your house to just pull that extra clay out of the inside. That way um, our walls don't go, get too thick and we won't have a problem um, with water evaporating out of your pieces when it goes into the kiln. Um, a couple other pieces that I grabbed that are just good examples of different things you can do. Here's a really cute little sea otter, okay? He was actually made as a pinch pot. So, um, and then they slipped and scored, which you already know how to do, these other little body parts onto this little dude. So, how you do a pinch pot. You're gonna go ahead and take some of your clay, roll it into a ball. And for this little guy, we probably started with a, a large baseball worth of clay. 
So I'm doing something just a little smaller just to give you an idea. So we're going to have our little circle here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna go ahead and push our finger into the middle of the clay. Don't go all the way through, but more like you have a little thumb, right? It's holding in there. And then you're gonna start pinching around the edges. And the goal with the thickness for our clay, we really want it to be about a quarter to a half an inch thick, okay? No more than a half an inch. So that's why we have these sticks that we sent home with you. These give you a really good guideline, okay? If it gets thicker or thinner than that, um, then you want to go back and try to get to about this thickness, okay? The clay can be molded with, if you make a mistake, smash it. Try to make sure that you work your clay a little bit just like you would kind of um, like dough. Um, you want to rework the clay back into one big group and then you can go ahead and try again. If it starts to become dry, grab a spray bottle or just sprinkle a little bit of water onto it to kind of moisten it back up. So you can see really quickly, I just have been going around in a circle and I made a little pinch pot, okay? So from here, I could decide, like if I wanted to make this little guy, I could decide how I want it to be shaped. If I want it to be flat on the bottom, I'm gonna give it a little tap on the bottom with my canvas. Not very hard, but now you can see I have a nice flat top to my piece, or sorry, flat bottom. Okay, so now he'll sit really well. Now I can go in and I can add any other little details that I want to my little guy. Remember it is going to shrink 10%, um, so build a little bit bigger than what you really want your piece to end up being like. Um, another piece that I grabbed as an example is this really pretty um, leaf bowl. So how we constructed this we had a bottom piece, okay, that's just a slab, and I'm gonna show you in a second how to roll out slabs. Um, we have this bottom piece, and then all of these are separate pieces, so we had to be really careful to slip and score our pieces together. And how we actually made this one, we rolled out all of our clay, we cut out all of the shapes, we used little cookie cutters for this, and then we took just a plastic bowl, okay? You can use anything in your house to um, build off of as a form. The big trick, Remember, it's going to shrink, so you don't want to leave it on this bowl for too long. Leave it for like, gosh, like 12 hours. It really depends on how hot the day is and what's going on in your house if you have the heat cranked up. So kind of be mindful to start watching it. But whatever you lay on here, you just want to make sure that you're going to come back to it later and, um, and take it off, right, before it starts to do that shrinking process. Because before you bring these back to the studio, they'll probably start to shrink on their own. Um, as they dry. So just make sure that you take it off of here before it starts to crack. So if I wanted to build something that was circular, I would start with something like this. I laid a paper towel down because then it will pop off really easily. If you build right on glass or plastic, the clay is going to want to stick to those surfaces and you'll end up having a really hard time and might accidentally break your piece trying to get it off. So always cover with just a regular paper towel. And then um, I'm gonna show you how to do just a quick little slump bowl. So keep that in mind, that's where we're gonna come back to. I'm gonna roll out this clay right now. So I use these two sticks on both sides of my clay. That way as I roll, I have a really nice way of knowing when I've um, gotten to a nice even thickness. So I'm gonna take my rolling pin, start rolling. Every once in a while, pick your clay up and flip it over or turn it to the side so that you're rolling it the direction that you want it to grow. And you can kind of start to hear that I'm starting to touch my stick so you can see that the thickness is about where my sticks are. I'm gonna give it just a couple more goes, make sure it's nice and thinned down. You can go a little thinner than these sticks that you have in your bag. The trick is when you, um, when you start with this thickness, so now I have a nice even piece of clay here, it's all the same thickness. When I start with this, then I know that I can roll a couple things into it without getting too thin, okay? So start with this, the thickness that I gave you and then you can always go a little bit thinner than that as you put textures and things into it. Um, you just don't wanna go too thin, so that's why we start a little thicker. So I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab a placemat because I bet that some of you have something like this at home. So um, there's tons of different textures. It's really fun to wander around your house or even your yard and find flowers and leaves and 
table mats and napkins, all kinds of different things. Noodles are really fun to play with um, that you can actually push into your clay. So I'm gonna take just this little placemat and I'm gonna roll this in for just a quick demonstration. So I got rid of my sticks, but I'm gonna be really mindful not to get too thin. And I'm just gonna take my rolling pin and roll right over this little mat to give this really pretty pattern. Now I can go back in and I can add more to it if I want. Okay, until I get it the way that I want it. So that looks pretty nice. Because I'm thinking about making like a little bowl, I'm going to find a circular, okay? So I just grabbed one of our bins here at the studio. A circular um, container that I can use to actually trace. So here's where this needle, needle tool comes in again. It's really good for slipping and scoring, so roughing up your pieces. It can also be used to cut your clay. So I'm going to push down all the way to the canvas be kind of gentle with these needles. They can break if you push too hard. So you wanna kind of be nice to them. And I'm just going all the way around. So get creative in finding things around your house that you can use to trace. So I just pushed all the way through my clay. I'm gonna kind of clean up those edges. So I have my nice little circle here. I'm gonna come back to this bowl that I had earlier. I'm gonna grab my paper towel, lay it down. And then you can decide, do I want this texture to be on the inside or the outside? I'm gonna go with the inside. I'm gonna lay this down on top of my bowl and then just start kind of pushing it around, okay? I would leave this here for a while. This is gonna end up being like a little ring dish, okay? That'll be, have just a little curve to it because it's taking on the curve of the container underneath it. Gonna let it probably sit here. This is, um, it's pretty cold in the studio today, so I would probably let this sit overnight and then in the morning, I'd come and pull it off and I'd have my nice little container that has a little bit of a curve to it, okay? So that's how you can do some slab containers. You can't um, get too high, of course, with your corners, um, with your raised edges. If I wanted to take this same piece of clay and instead really turn it up or get creative with how um, it's going to hold something, I can actually just start manipulating it, changing it with my fingers too. So this gives it a little bit more of a curve. Anything that you do by hand, it's gonna naturally take on a little bit of um, an organic look. So try not to get hung up on having it be absolutely perfect. That's really hard, especially when we're thinking about functional pieces. It's really hard to create that perfect, okay? Nothing's ever perfect in art, but that perfect feeling um, shape, unless you're on the wheel, okay? Which is a whole different thing that we don't have at our houses right now. So um, try to not get yourself stressed out by that. So I just kind of, as you can see, was flipping this around and pinching the edges of it to give it that curve. And then I can also come in, like if I wanted this to be like a little spoon dish and I can make a little spot for the spoon to sit. You can really do anything with your clay. The most important things to make sure you remember to do is to slip and score with your slip and your needle, okay? Anytime you're attaching two pieces of clay together. And then make sure that you don't get any thicker than that golf ball sized um, piece of clay because it won't dry correctly. So that's where you would wanna go back in and hollow that piece of clay out. Um, no one will be able to see it from the bottom, but that way we know that it's gonna dry correctly. Um, if you run into any questions while you're creating and you need a little help, please feel free to email me um, at the studio and I'd be happy to um, talk you through anything. It's really helpful to see pictures so that I know kind of where you're at. If you have pieces of clay that you're not done working on, um, go ahead and just cover them with plastic, okay? So you can, um, of course, always close up your clay that you're not using with the bag that it came in. Um, but just take like an old, we use garbage bags here at the studio, the white garbage bags. Throw anything that you're not quite done with into pl a plastic bag overnight, and that way you can continue to work on it the next day without any problems, okay? So again, go ahead and email me if you run into any questions, though. It's chelsea at redmondartworks.com. Thank you.